the eight pillar covers. Uh, as you can see, I already painted it inside here with some uh, East Woods rust encapsulator, which is like basically it's a zero rust, PR15, whatever, cheaper version of it. Actually, I got it on a scratch dead sale for a pretty good price, that's why I'm using it. I already drilled the holes for down here where the spot was going to go. I want to clean this up because it's taking the dash pan off. I don't know how many times I've been spotting the holes here. But it's nice, making progress. You know, this is like I so said, this is back on. Got seam seal in here. It's kind of half ass paint inside with the uh, rust encapsulator just to protect the metal inside here. As soon as I get these on, then I can spray the inside after I, you know, what sand everything, or sand everything with some. Uh, 120 grit, make it, make it some bite for the paint I want to use. But it's nice, I got a new tool to bend this flange over, show you how you do that. Um, hopefully you get that, hopefully you get it to that tonight, it might not. Um, got some panel bottom here that I just want to squirt across here and then put it on. Get it real good, clamp it up. Do the plug welds here, a couple spot welds along the side here like the factory had, one up the top there and then this flange gets bent over. But the problem is I also got to do a little bit of trimming here first, just because to match the ground port on the new A-pillar. I can do the same thing on the other side. But from the factory, they didn't even bother that. They just let it hang over and just did like four or five spot, spot welds. Well, let's get it all. A few weeks ago when I was at Eastwood, got this uh, punch flanging tool. So for when you uh, need to punch a hole through for a weld or whatever, I think it is awesome. I wish I would have had this years ago for a lot of a lot of things. What I do is take it in, shove it in, <laughs> shove it in, squeeze the hole. There you go, I got a 316 inch hole for you to plug well. Which goes great around that little thin material because it doesn't need much more than that. Finally, get to actually use this panel body he's at the hat around for a while. It's an AB uh, epoxy, or yeah, yeah, we can call it epoxy. Um, Mix it together, it hardens after about an hour, but being it's kind of cold in here, actually, once I get done welding this in and clamping it up and bending it, I'm going in for the night. And it's 25 degrees out or something like that. It's just getting down like 18. But anyways, got this uh, heel cool tip, goes on the top. Got this pretty nifty little gun. It uh, has a small side, you can see that. Small side and big side. Goes in like that. Works small. Goes in like that, and then uh, squeeze it. There you go. We're gonna run a bead down in here, run a bead across here, and then uh, go clamp the A pillar cover on. So this is the uh, helical tip. It goes in on the top like that. Slides on. The plug that keeps the Nisa from squirting out. Cap screws on. Pulls the tip in place. So you squeeze it. You'll see it start to come up. You got a couple different colors in there. And when it gets through there completely, it actually mixes it something like a red like it like a million times or something like that. And uh, by the time it comes from here to there, and you get yourself a good bead coming out. That's pretty decent actually. Um, so I just want to give it a squirt along here. There's a good save pillar. I'm gonna get too crazy with it. I'm just trying to look for a little bit more strength. There's a long here. And now we're gonna place the a pillar cover up in there. spreader bar or a uh, spreader from like a body filler, give it a spread real quick. But honestly, there's nothing here structural. It's just a cover. I'm just going a little bit more strength in the area. And that's all I'm looking for. I'm not looking for much more. I'm going to get a couple clamps, make sure it's all the way up against the structure. Here, where we're going to plug up there. Uh, yeah, 
Yeah, you see some squeeze out behind there. Cool. All right. Time to do the other side. Literally, same process as the other side. Pack well is long here. Are you doing on the other side? We're kind of pain. Thick metal, thin metal. Nah, it's tough. But we'll make it work. Good thing a decent welder, uh, good thing I'm a decent grinder, not a welder. Alright, turn up the heat, do the uh, one, two, three welds there. But I'm going to rotate the rotisserie up because it makes it a little easier because I like welding them like this. Yeah, it's a woodworking clamp, that's all I got. Uh, one of the tips I got also have is to go through the weld through primer. I know people give me shit for using it, but eh, that's why I learned how to do it. Nip the tip, I think I already told this one. And as long as you have a sharp uh, point on your wire, it will cut through the, the coating and get right to the metal. And then it will burn the coating well. Yeah, I'm probably going to melt the shit out of this pad, but. So there we go, that is the aftermath of using the uh, DS1000 tool. Get a nice perfect grip going down along in there. It sure hell beats the hammer and dialing for, you know, 15, 20 minutes on end. The directions basically tell you to knock it over a good bit, you know, enough to, enough to give it a fold over to actually start the crease, and then have at it with the tool. But I don't think they were in mind when they were designing the tool itself that it was going to be used on eight pillars for Camaros. Anyways, that's what it looks like. I'm on focus. Hey, there we go. And you see, it's just a little, it just squishes with a nylon pad, nylon pad, runs, runs along the outside that you see, so it doesn't scuff it up. And it saved me a whole mess in time. It gave me, as you can see, an almost perfect crimp all the way across, except for the other side where I screwed it up because I was pushing too hard on it on the one way. Because it tells you on the, the, in the directional videos that when you're uh, crimping something, you don't want to have it so you, where you're rotating it onto the, to the skin itself, if that makes sense. Uh, you actually want to rotate it off the skin so let the crimping part do its job. And that way you're not putting all the pressure up on the, the uh, Let's call, it, let's call it the pretty side, so you don't screw up the pretty side of the part. Well, oh, there we go. A little bit of grinding down on the welds. There, up there, in six spots. And uh, for the big welds and a couple along the tacks. And then I'll be done for the night. <laughs>